Okay. All right, so mean is average, median is middle value, mode is most occurring. What does bimodal mean? There's two modes. Bimodal would mean two modes. Trimodal would mean three. What do we mean by outlier? We haven't talked about it a lot yet, but what do you think we mean? About by itself on the outside, it's a value that is far away from the rest. It could be a value that's a lot lower than everybody else or a value that's a lot higher, but it's one that just stands out as it does. It stands out huh, that it's lying further away, outlier. Now, weighted mean. What this is, this is a mean of values that are weighted. Um, and I, I know that kind of sounds weighted mean, mean of values that are weighted. And what we mean by weighted values, y'all haven't run across it too much at Lindale, but maybe some of your college classes and stuff like that. So here it's 50% homework, 50% tests. But some places it's 80% homework or 60% homework, 10% quizzes and 20%, you know, they, they weight each of the grades differently. So we'll do an example actually with grades because that's the most common reason we weight values, weighted grades. Okay. Um, frequency distribution. That's when we have the table and it's grouped and we do the frequencies in each group. So mean of a frequency distribution means we're going to have the mean of grouped data. What we do if it's not just single values, but they're grouped. Now, the next four are talking about the shape of the graph. Symmetrical. What do we mean by symmetrical? Even on both sides. Most of the time that looks kind of like a bell curve. Yeah, yeah, even. Uniform. We haven't had this pop up, but what if all of our frequencies were exactly the same? Well, it would go up and it would go like straight across. Uniform would have no, no not one value standing out over the others. It's uniform. What did skewed left mean? Big on the right side, and it has a tail on the left. Perfect. So, yeah, it would have a tail on the left, and then it's big on the right side. No. Skewed right, tail on the right. All right. So, now let's get into the measures of central tendencies. The first one we're going to talk about is the mean. Now there's two notations that are used for mean, and it depends on whether we're talking about the sample mean or the population mean. We're going to focus mainly on the sample mean today, and the notation for sample mean is an X with a bar over it. We call it X bar. Because Mathematicians are very creative with their name. The symbol for population mean is a Greek letter, and it's the Greek letter mu. Mu looks like this. It's like a U with a long tail on it, or you can think about it as a very pointy M. Mu. This is mu. Pronounce mu. Now, how do we find the mean or average of values? Add them up. Now, the formula that you would see in textbooks has this weird symbol. And then x over n. So what do you think that symbol means? 
It's sigma and it stands for sum. So this means to add up all the x's and divide by n represents the number of values. We're going to have that notation pop up a lot. So that weird sigma notation just means to add them up. All right with me. Okay. Well, let's find a mean then. Here are the prices in dollars for a sample of round trip tickets from Orlando, Florida to Madison, Wisconsin. What is the mean price of the tickets? So since this is a sample, we are definitely finding the sample mean. So what would we do first? We need to add them up. So for my video, since I'm recording, I'm going to show that we're going to add them all up. You do not have to write that. Whoops, 490. Divided by, how many values are there? Seven. What'd you get? Anybody? And this is price, so it's money, 429 cents. Okay, so $413.29 is the average price. Now, what about median? How do you find the median of a data set? Okay, so the first step is put the values in order. And then what? Once they're in order, Okay, find the middle value. But what if it's an even number? Okay, so if even number average the two middle values. So what is the median price for that flight? So what do we need to do first? Put them in order. So what's the smallest price? 248. And then 33. 341. 87. Am I right? Okay. Uh, what's next? 473, 490, and 621. Okay, so there were seven values. So the middle one would be my median. So 387 is the median price. What if there was, what if there was, you said if there's two in the middle, you add them up, you divide by two. Yeah, so we're going to look at that next. All right. So what if we had six values? So we have the prices of the top six smartphones, and we want to find the median price. So what we're going to do is we're going to list them out in order. And we're doing these by hand right now. I will show you all how to do it in the calculator. Um, 497. 589, 699, 799, 999. So when you're looking for the middle here, when we go to the middle, there's two values in the middle. Not just one. So the median would be the average of those two. Can anybody find that for me yet? 
$644 is the median price. All right. What about the Justin Bieber concert? What do we have to do? List them out. Okay, what 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 number is the smallest? Eight. There's two eights. And then nine. There's another nine. So when there's repeating values, that's why we're doing this, we have to list each one. Um, 10, 11, 12, 12, 13, 14, 14, 16, 18, Twenty-five. I counted 25 values. So if there's 25 values, let's think about where the middle's going to be. So what's half of 25? 12 and a half. Okay, so if I count in 12 from each side, I should kind of get to the middle, right? Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And we can see that our middle is fourteen. We're okay finding medians, even on repeated data. So you just have to make sure you list up each of them over and over. All right, now to the mode. I don't know why these notes had three steps for it. How do you find the mode? Find the one that occurs the most. So we have the same data set from the Bieber concert. Which one appeared the most? Which one did we list out? 11. 11 is the mode. So 14 was the median and 11 was the mode. Now let's find all three. So these are samples of ages in um, at a community college intro stat course. And we want to find the mean, median, and mode. So mean, you're going to add them up and divide by how many we have. Anybody get the total yet? 28. 
20. So the four iterations is all added together. Uh -huh. Divided by 20. And that's my average age. Now let's find the median. Now I noticed that this data was almost in order. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. But then this 22 is in the wrong spot. So I'm just going to switch it. Like make that a 21 and make this one a 22. And then I think the rest of them are in order. Now there were 20 data values. So how far do I need to go in from each side? 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm between two values. I'm between 22 and 23. 22.5 is the median age. Now let's find the mode. Twenty. So twenty occurs the most. Now I'm I'm noticing that you know these are two apart, and then this one's higher. Why is the average age? higher than the median. Which one's an outlier? Oh, we got a, we got somebody who went back to school in this class and everybody else is in college, huh? 67. So 67 is an outlier. That is affecting the mean. If that wasn't there, we'd actually be closer to 22 for our average. 22, 23, somewhere in that realm. But that 67 is kind of pulling that mean toward it. Now notice, is, is the median affected by having a large number at the end? Mm -mm. The median is not affected. by an outlier. That's really important. We're going to come back to that a lot. Median is not affected by an outlier. So the median is called a resistant measure. Okay, yeah. can I please see Miles Keith in office for a minute? Yes. Okay, so it's resistant to outliers. Outliers do not pull it away. Now, which one is going to be the best one to describe the center of this data? The mean was being affected by the 67-year-olds. So that's really not good. Is 20 good? No. Mm, no. So the median is the best description of center. Now, if I looked at this data, you know, we'd have a lot over here in the 20s and 23s, right? And then what happens? All of a sudden we have this outlier way out here, 67. So we would say this is skewed right because of that 67, that outlier. So when data is skewed, you can't always trust the mean to be perfect because you have this wrong data in there. So when you have an outlier, it skews the data that way and it affects your mean, but it does not affect median. Yes. If there was no 67 and there was like a five, would it be skewed left? Yes. Okay. The five-year-old taking a college class would be very impressive. Yeah. But yes, it would. If if you had some a small one over here, it would skew the data that way. Okay. Perfect. All right. Now we're going to look at a weighted mean. So when we have a weighted mean, that means each value is going to be weighted somehow 
And so the formula for finding a weighted mean is we're going to find the sum, but what we're going to do is we're going to take the weight times each value. So the W is going to stand for the weight and the X stands for the value. And we're going to divide that by the sum of the weights. So I find this best to like make a table of the data. And so we're going to have our value. We're going to have the weight of that value. And then we can multiply those two together and then add them up, okay? So in this data, we have, you're taking a class in which the grade is calculated from four different categories. We've got your test category, homework, 15% from labs, and 10% from projects. So this is also how you would find your average in some of the college classes if you needed to do it just from adding up your own grades. Okay, so what's the weight for the tests category? 60%, so I'm gonna put 0 0.60 for 60%. The homework average is weighted at 0.15 and the lab 0.15 and 10% from projects. Now, what was the average score of all the tests that student had taken? 88. Homework, they got a 97, 91 on labs, and 89 right here. So we can't just add these up and divide by four because they're weighted differently. The tests are heavily weighted. So what we're gonna do is multiply 0. 0.6 times eight, eight, Thank you. Thank you. And then 15.15, I'm sorry, times 97. 55, okay. 0.15 times 91. Perfect. And point, oh, I can do this one, 8.9. And then we're going to add all those up. So the sum of all of those is going to be down here. So the sum of the weights times the X's, I'm going to put there. I believe that's 89.9. Now we're supposed to divide that by the sum of the weights. So what is the sum of each of those weights? 100, okay, so it's 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 just a one, point zero zero. Okay, so if I divide that by one, I'm gonna have basically the same thing. So my weighted mean, weighted mean is 89.9. So the last thing we're gonna do today is using a frequency table. So this means frequency table. This means I have 10 people that said they send between zero and 49 text messages, but I don't know their exact numbers, right? I could have had a 40, a 30, a two, 10, a, I don't know. Five people in this category, 13 people in this category, 11 in this category, seven here and four here. So for a a frequency table, we've got to find a good number that would be the best estimate for the people in this group between zero and 49. Would a good estimate be closer to zero or 49 or should we be right in the middle? Right in the middle. So you're exactly right. We're going to use what we call a midpoint. Now, 
remember that even though it says 49, technically it's like 49.999999 because you're going right up to 50. So I like to look at the next class, zero to 50. What would be my midpoint? 25. 50 to 100? 75. So that's the midpoint of that group. Then 100 to 150. And then we've got 175. 225 to 75. So to find the mean of a frequency table, and I forgot to put the, the formula box on there, but that's okay. We're going to take the sum of the midpoint times the frequency divided by the total number of values. And that, that, that total number of values is going to be the total frequencies. If I added up all my frequencies, that's the total number of people. So the first thing we need to do is find those two multiplied together. So the midpoint times the frequency. And then we'll add them up. So 25 times 10. Then 75 times 5. Yeah, let me know if I make a mistake. I believe there are 50 values? Yes. Okay. And so I got 137. Okay. Average text messages sent. Okay. Messages. All right. Now, I want to show you that you can put this in the calculator. Now, what if it had just been one of our earlier data sets? So let me go back to my main screen. I'm going to go to the statistics tab. And if it had just been, oh, I'll get one that's small. How about the, the smartphone one? Five, eight, nine, four, nine, seven, four, five, five, six, nine, nine, seven, nine, 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 nine. If you just have a list of values, I know that's kind of fuzzy, um, you just put it in the values. Remember, you could go to the graph and look at your histogram if you wanted to. But I'm going to go to the stats. It tells me the number of data points. It tells me my minimum. It tells me my median. Is that what we got? 644, yep. And then if we go down to the next page, it gives me my mean. It gives me my sample mean right there. If I have a frequency table, there's a column that says frequency. So if I have a frequency table like this, it doesn't let me put the upper and lower values. I have to put the midpoint. So I would type in 25, 75, 125, 175, 
225 to 75, but because there's a frequency column, I have to put the frequencies in. 10, 5, 13, 11, 7, and 4. Then if I go to stats, it gives me my median is 125. If I scroll down, it says the mean is 137. Is that what we got for the mean? It even, if we scroll even further, says the sum of all the values is 6850. And that's what we got when we added them all up. So it gives you every part of what we did already right there. Even gives me my mode is 125. So we'll give you your mean, median, and mode in the calculator as well. But when it's small data sets, it's easy to find, like if it's five or six. Are we okay with mean, median, and mode? All right, we're done for the day.